What's going on, guys? We here, we here. Let's go. This is round three. <laughs> round three. All right, so this is round three of my Charlotte tournament, the last one I just played in. Before we get started, though, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already so we can get up to 100K subs. We're trying to get there, right? So, of course, in another announcement here, boom, this is the merch uh, store, shopcantymerch.com. You can uh, find the link in the description, shopcantymerch.com. We do have some new Bucket hats here, calculation over everything, right? We got the uh, Rook Lift shirts and everything else. We also have the women's line as well for the ladies. All right, let's get to it. So this is actually round three. Round three, I'm playing Nico Chasen. And Nico is an FM feeding master, extremely strong. And um, yeah, let's see the game. In fact, uh, the name of this one is Lights Out, right? Lights Out, bro. Lights Out. Let's see what we have. Okay, so I play E4. He goes C5. Knight of three, knight c6. I knew he was going to play the timing off here. D4 takes, takes e6. He always plays the timing off. I have uh, one game I'm winning and two I lose. I lost to a grandmaster and uh, another person. But uh, And then um, I had a win against an IM. But the reason for it is because I'm playing the sharp line here, right? This is all theory. And I after a6, this newer move here is uh, g4 for the score. Bruh. This is a strong move, and it's very aggressive, and it's scary, and I like playing aggressive stuff. I love pushing the G-Pawn myself, so G4 with the intention of playing G5, especially if Knight of 6. So what happens here is B5. This is still theory, by the way. After B5, Knight takes C6, Queen takes. I play Queen D2, falling for it, right? And by the way, we are still following theory. So after B4, he's attacking the Knight. The Knight is attacked, which was defending the Pawn. After I move it... Right, now this looks like suicide, right? So he shouldn't take the pawn, but he took the pawn! He takes the pawn. Here, this could definitely be lights out real fast if you're not careful. So we go rook to g1. He's hitting the rook, obviously. So rook to g1 with the threat of bishop to g2. Now my notes, and in my theory, and in the games I have actually seen, I've seen queen to c4. But I have never in my life seen queen to c6. And I was like, what is this? This usually they go queen c4, then queen c6, which is kind of strange. So he went queen c6 immediately, which I've never seen. And after queen c6, bishop to g2, steal. I'm still, of course, hitting this. He goes d5. A lot of times in these lines, you go knight f4, and knight takes d5. After casting two as well, like you're able to sack on here, put the rook on the file with a smile, and go crazy. Like it's definitely a powerful uh, initiative you get for the pawn. After d5, I castle queenside. Piece is out and developed. I'm feeling great. He goes bishop b7. He develops a piece. Casting queenside is not the greatest idea. Um, believe it or not, engine is like, yo, it's equal right now, right? That's my alarm from, uh, from a different uh, different time. So, yeah, that was the alarm. But, um, yeah, in this position here, right, casting queenside. It's, it's, just, it's just not good. It's no good for him to castle queenside. Obviously, the king's open and stuff like that. But after bishop to b7, um, I go g5, and the, and the engine says f4, which I may, I may makes sense now. f4, I'm trying to play f5. g5 is nice. It does stop the knight from moving. And I remember from a previous game that I played against uh, Grandmaster Alonzo Zapata, I actually was supposed to play g5 in one game, um, but I ended up playing something else. But g5 was the move uh, that I played. So after g5, he went knight e7. I go knight d4 because he wants to put the knight on f5. Knight d4, and then he goes queen d7. And then engine says bishop h3, rook g to e1, which is a hard move to make. I played f4, which is very logical. We want to play f4. We want to play f5 as well. It's something that we would like to play. Uh, engine didn't like it <laughs> too much. But after f4, g6, because he's stopping all f5 stuff. And here I have a choice to take this pawn or do something else. I can play h4, I can play rook h1. And of course, what do you think you would do in this position? And we are out of theory, obviously, here, and we're trying to figure this out. We're still down a pawn, by the way. And we don't want him to consolidate because he's up a pawn. So it's uh, white to move. What do you do in this position? Okay, so a few moves again. h4, king b1. Um, and just says rook h1. What a move, bro. I'm not playing rook h1. Bruh. It's crazy. Rook h1. <laughs> Engine work. But I play queen takes b4. Still equal, by the way. Engine, Engine didn't even consider this, but it's after I take the pawn. They're like, oh, yeah, you can play that too. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Queen takes b4, right? So I take this because I'm getting my pawn back. Yes, there's lines over here, but the idea is, you know what? I want to get the pawn back, and my idea here is if we trade pieces, which we does, he goes knight of five, I bring the queen back, and we trade. We get this position, and I notice that this is like a bad French, in a way. Now, of course, you do have the dark square bishop, but in the French, right, you still have the dark square bishop that's very active. And if we trade this bishop for knight, 
This bishop's going to be very terrible. I have e5. Yeah, probably equal, but definitely I have a queenside majority too. Um, of course, this pawn's kind of stopping our queenside majority, but these two at least are against here for a passed pawn. So after queen takes e3, bishop to d6. I go king b1, get out the way. Castles, and then I reroute. Now, of course, engine says I should play rook h1, rook gf1. I don't even know what that does. And backing up here, in fact, king b1. I play king b1 because it's a great move. In post-game analysis, we both talked about f5 being a move here. Engine doesn't even bring it up. But f5 I didn't like because I think he could just e5, which I thought he would do. e5, or even castling uh, in some cases. But e5 is the move here. And I was like, okay, cool. What do I do next? F6 actually is not that good because you lock up everything. And his king is actually really safe with your own pawns. How did you do this to yourself? Bruh. You, you helped him be safe, right? So that's no good there. I wanted to try some bishop h3 here. But he can play queen to e7 or d8. He just moves the queen out of the way. And I actually, believe it or not, have nothing. The bishops hold these pawns, right? The engines actually prefer black right now, right? By minus 0.5, obviously, that's a, a equal position, they say. I would prefer to be white, yes. But again, I, if I play f6, he always can get back with his bishop, right? If I try to get the queen over there. Taking opens the file or even, you know, I mean, probably taking this way. It opens the file and I need to put some pressure here. But eventually he could literally just castle and say, hey, uh, what are you going to do? And then my knight's hanging. And then the pawns get rolling, believe it or not. So as crazy as that is, Bruh. f5 is not a move. So um, I did not play it. Engine didn't say it either. King b1 is the move I made, which is getting out of the way. I wanted to play f5 really bad, but it didn't work. So he castles and gets out the way. I go knight f3 with the idea of like, cool, like I said, I'm going to have the better bishop or a better piece. Knight f3, I'm going to put the knight on e5. My goal is to go knight e5, put the queen over here like this, put rook d3 up and rook h3 and go for mate. And if he plays f5, I'm passant and I'm going to open this g file, right? So let's see what happens. Knight f3, um, queen c7, he attacks the pawn. I go knight e5, he goes rook c8, makes total sense. And I play queen e2. He's threatening bishop c5. He's also threatening queen takes c2. Um, I also thought about playing c3, but uh, after c3, believe it or not, engine's like, yeah, give up the exchange, which I actually consider doing this, but I'm like, oh, I mean, this is too much. Like, why am I doing it? And then after takes, takes, like, you know, queen c5 loses to takes, takes 97, maybe not losing, but it's like equal. And I'm like, I didn't want this. This is not what I wanted to do. So I put the queen on e2 with the intention of playing like rook d3, rook h3, rook c1, queen g4, queen h4, and go for mate. Knight g4, knight f6 is also another idea, right? And my king's not on b1 anymore, or c1. So after bishop takes f4, that's not check any longer. So after queen e2, uh, f6, which I was like, bro, he tripping. Bruh. Fine go tripping, number one. Secondly, what is this move, my guy? Like, this is not a move. Like, you open it up the file here immediately for me. So after f6, it's white to move. It's on you. Um, pause the video if you need to. What did I do in this position? What do you do? Right to move. Do we capture? Do we move the knight? Do we sack the knight? What do we do? A pawn, moving the knight, something like that. Here's the move. I chose knight to g4. Knight g4 was really strong because if bishop takes, I take on f6. e6 is also hanging as well. Taking on g5 is no good. So he takes on f4. Believe it or not, it's still zeros here. Bruh. Engine is ridiculous, right? Bishop takes f4, knight takes f6, zero what, right? At this point, I'm feeling real comfortable. I'm like, bro, this is... I'm about to play h4, h5. Like, you about to get made it. I play h4, he goes bishop e5. And here, I have only three moves in this position. Can you find all three of them, in fact? Let's see if you can find them. Pause the video if you need to. Come back, put in the comments. Let me know if you found all three moves in this position. There are only three moves in this position. Only is very strong word. But that's correct. There's only like three moves in this position. Can you find them? White's right move. Here we go. Here we go. First move. Rook GF1. Rook GF1. Bruh. I thought the same thing. I was like, why? And I actually thought this in the game. I was like, why would I just go rook f1? I mean, I'm so close, right? h5 takes rook h1. I'm so close to winning. I'm so close. But he's also threatening to take the knight. So this is very crucial. He is threatening to take the knight right now. 
And so I didn't take it. I thought about this rook too as well. I thought about h5, but h5 is just not enough because after he takes, um, even on f6, something like this, bishop takes, takes, um, and then after rook takes, takes, takes. Like I, I didn't get that much from it. I, mean, I, could, I could still play on, but I'm not getting as much as I want out of this. Um, there's also another move that black can play too as well that I'm going to show you in a minute. But rook f1 is a move that I consider. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's just kind of passive. It feels like that. And then I spotted a move. And I was like, wait a second. What about this move? This move is super cool if I'm able to play this. And here it is. Right? I go, 97! Oh! Woo! That's a move! Hitting the rook, hit the bishop. Hit the rook, hit the bishop at the same time. That's sweet, right? And if he takes it, well, shoot, I just got a better position. Take queen g7. Take on e6. Beautiful. And I'm going to try to clear. I'm going to just try to end game this one all the way out. After knight d7, I was like, yo, I'm in, the, like, I'm in the driver's seat. This is it. Right? But unfortunately, right here, it's lights out. It's lights out. And I completely missed this idea. Bishop takes b2. Bruh. And when it hurts, bishop takes b2. And I'm like, what just happened? Now, actually, going back, after rook f1, after rook f1, uh, sorry, um, after h5. After h5, the h5 idea, same idea. Bishop takes b2. This was a threat. This is a very strong threat. And it's just hard to notice that that's a threat. Like, what the heck is that, right? So after knight d7, bishop takes b2. The idea is... If I take, then he takes. And then just go down a pawn. Like, why would I just want to go through this position? So I was like, all right, well, I messed this up. Uh, if I take the rook, which I did, I was like, let's just take the rook. And he goes bishop c3, which is threatening mate. He's threatening mate here. I don't have any checks, right? So I try the last trick here. Queen e3 is a move too as well. And I could have got, got out of it this way. It's still minus 1.6. And also he has two bishops, right? Like in my king's week. But at least I'm still fighting. I tried for some tactics here, which is queen takes e6. Very complicated, sharp stuff. It's hard uh, playing chess at this level sometimes. It's very, very difficult when you have sharp positions like this. So queen takes e6. I take with the queen after queen takes e6. Uh, the idea here is after rook takes, uh, well, we actually went for it. He played queen c5. And I tried this line. I thought that, you know, I was like, oh, hopefully this will work. I played bishop takes d5. Right. He takes back. I take with the queen. All right, but he has this rook b8 check here. This was the whole thing. This rook b8 thing. And I mean, this is clever because I'm threatening mate right now, right? I'm threatening mate if he's just not paying attention. <laughs> threatening, I'm threatening mate. But of course, he takes with d5. I take with the queen trying to trade. But unfortunately, he has rook b8 check. And that is it. King c1, queen a3 mate. I have to block with the queen. And then um, I block with the queen takes. And queen f2 is just going to mate. Right, so this is game over. Uh, one shot, literally one move, guys. And one move game. Chess is a very hard game like that. As you see it even at the top level. One move would just end it. Have a great game. Everything be going well, and then you miss something. Now, of course, the re remainder of the tournament, I was able to look around the board and just like, you know what, bro? I'm not about to let this happen to me. Like, you know, again, like, let me figure this out and uh, and go from there. So we lost this game, but we're definitely learning experience. Every loss is learning. And if you don't learn, then you definitely lost that game. So... Of course, uh, this was a tough game, but learned a lot from it as we went into uh, the rest of the tournament. So this was round three. We're going to come for round four as well um, in the meantime uh, and, and stuff like that. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Check again the merch store here. Love y'all. As uh, usual, here's COE calculation over everything. ShopCantyMerch.com. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, and we see you on the next video. Huh.